This is Story Recapped. Today, I'm going to explain a drama, horror, and mystery film called Hereditary. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. In a busy town in Utah, Steve Graham prepares his teenage son, Peter, for the funeral of their grandmother, Ellen Taper Lee. After noticing that his daughter isn't in her room, Steve checks her treehouse where he finds his 13-year-old daughter, Charlie, sleeping. He immediately wakes her up as they're going to be late. On the other hand, Steve's wife, Annie, waits in their car while practicing her eulogy for her mother. At the funeral, while Annie nervously delivers her speech, Charlie makes a tongue-clicking noise while drawing a bizarre sketch of her mother. That evening, Annie, who happens to be an artist sculpting miniature dioramas, continues working in her studio to prepare for her upcoming exhibition. Steve visits her, then heads into Peter's room to check on him before saying goodnight. On the other hand, Annie comforts Charlie, who is genuinely saddened by Ellen's death, unlike the rest of the family. To console her, Annie reminds Charlie that she was grandma's favorite, but Charlie claims that her grandmother had always hoped that she was a boy. Charlie also worries about who will care for her if her mother dies, so Annie assures her that Steve or Peter will look after her if that ever happens. Before leaving, Annie notices the word Say Tony written on Charlie's wall. Annie then looks through a memory book later that night in her studio, where she sees her mother smiling at her in the dark. Frightened, Annie hides her miniature diorama depicting Ellen trying to breastfeed Charlie. At school, Charlie is crafting a toy instead of taking a quiz when a bird hits their classroom windows. While her classmates make a fuss about it, Charlie stares at a pair of scissors as if she's planning something. Later on, Charlie goes out and checks the bird. She then cuts its head and puts it in her pocket before casually eating her favorite chocolate. Then, she sees a woman on the other side of the street waving at her. At the same time, Annie is working in her studio when she notices that her mother's room is open and sees a huge triangle drawn on the floor. Terrified, Annie closes it and asks Steve if he went into Ellen's room, to which Steve says he didn't before locking it up so it wouldn't bother her anymore. Suddenly, he receives a call from a cemetery informing him that Ellen's grave has been desecrated. He also decides to keep the news from Annie who doesn't suspect that something's wrong. Annie then tells her husband that she's going to the cinema, but she instead attends a grief therapy support group. That night, Annie is initially hesitant to share her loss, but soon bluntly shares her mother's mental health concerns, including disassociative identity disorder and dementia. She also tells everyone about her father, who had psychotic depression and starved himself to death, and her schizophrenic brother who killed himself. Annie then shares how manipulative her mother was and how guilty she felt when Ellen got sick. Finally, Annie expresses that she feels blamed, but she doesn't know why. The following morning, Charlie is crafting a mannequin in her room when she notices an unusual light that leads outside. She then follows the light into the back of their house, walking as if she's in a trance while holding the bird's head. At the same time, the gallery owner contacts Annie to inquire about the status of her new creations, so she heads to her room to take pictures of them. Suddenly, Peter walks in and asks permission to bring the car to a school party, hoping to see Bridget a classmate that he likes. Annie then asks him whether his sister is going with him. So, Peter immediately looks for Charlie. Back in the field, Charlie sees her grandmother surrounded by flames. Astounded, Charlie clicks her tongue as if she's calling Ellen. Suddenly, the furious Annie arrives and drags Charlie back to the house as it's cold outside. When Charlie informs her that she wants Ellen back, Annie forces her to go with Peter to the party hoping Charlie will meet some friends. On their way to the party, Peter seems annoyed by Charlie as she keeps clicking her tongue. They then pass by a telephone pole that has a strange symbol on it. At the party, Peter quickly notices Bridget alone on the couch. Peter wants to hang out with her and invites her to smoke some pot, leaving Charlie alone in the crowd. Charlie then eats a piece of chocolate cake, unaware that it contains nuts, which she's highly allergic to. Soon, Charlie finds it hard to breathe because of an anaphylactic reaction and informs her brother about it. Worried, Peter carries his sister to the car and drives along the dark road to the hospital. Charlie rises in the back seat as she struggles to breathe, so Peter speeds up, unaware that Charlie has popped her head out of the window to get some air. Suddenly, Peter uncontrollably swerves to avoid a dead deer in the road, causing Charlie's head to smash into a post. Peter suddenly stops in shock, and as he sits and stares at the road for a while, he tries to comprehend what has happened. He even attempts to look at the rearview mirror, but stops as Peter can't take the reality. Instead, Peter drives home in a quiet haze. At home, he leaves the car and never looks back, before heading straight to his room. The traumatized Peter lies in bed until morning, and eventually, he hears his mother's screams. After finding a headless Charlie in the car, the following days, Annie is still crying in pain while Peter is still drowning in his own guilt and conscience. Soon, 
the family holds Charlie's funeral. The following day, Peter has a panic attack while smoking pot under the school's bleachers. When his friends try to calm him down, Peter sobs and tells him he feels like his throat is getting bigger. That night, Peter arrives at home and takes a deep breath before going in. Unbeknownst to him, Annie sits in her car in the driveway grieving. She then heads to the support group venue, where she changes her mind and decides to leave. However, before returning home, a support group member, Joan, notices her and encourages her to go. After learning about Charlie's death, Joan sympathizes and shares with her that she's recently lost her own child and grandson. Joan then hands Annie her number in case she needs someone to talk to. When Annie gets home and goes to bed, Steve makes a move on her but she rejects him. Then, Annie chooses to sleep in Charlie's treehouse instead. At the same time, Peter hears Charlie's tongue clicking noise and gets scared upon looking at his hoodie in the corner of the room, initially thinking it's his dead sister. The next day, Annie pays a visit to Joan at her apartment after sharing what happened to Charlie. Annie opens up about her sleepwalking incident, where she bathed Peter, Charlie, and herself with paint thinner before waking up to light a match. She claims to be surprised and confused after waking up holding a matchbox in her left hand and a can of paint thinner in her right. Annie admits to Joan that her relationship with her children has never been the same ever since that day. During dinner, Annie seems off as she barely touches her food. Annie occasionally glances at Peter, who struggles to cut his steak, making him self-conscious. Peter then asks her if there's something that she wants to say. Annie refuses to talk at first, but she starts talking until she ends up screaming at him, blaming her son for Charlie's death. Annie tells him that the dinner would be okay if Peter said sorry and took responsibility for the accident, but she's frustrated as no one admits to anything. Peter then stares and reminds his mother that she was the one who forced Charlie to attend the party in the first place, so Steve intervenes and tells him to stop, causing Annie to walk out. The following day, Annie tries her best to continue working on her diorama for the exhibit. At an art supply store, Annie stumbles upon Joan, who excitedly tells Annie about an open seance she attended. Joan informs her that they taught her how to conduct a seance and tells her that a spiritual medium could conjure her deceased grandson. She then encourages Annie to come with her and observe a seance firsthand. In her apartment, Joan immediately starts the ritual and contacts her grandson who communicates with them using a glass and a chalkboard. Frightened, Annie starts having a panic attack after witnessing that the chalk is moving by itself. Joan assures Annie that she can also perform a similar summoning by using a personal item of the deceased, as her link, saying a mysterious spell and ensuring that her entire family is present during the ritual. Joan then hands Annie a candle and a spell guide before she leaves. On her way home, Annie hears a clicking sound while driving home, much to her surprise. When Annie wakes up that night, she discovers a swarm of ants leading to Peter's dead body. Suddenly, Peter notices her and tells her that she's sleepwalking, also wondering why she seems to be afraid of him. Annie then unintentionally admits that she never intended to be his mother and even attempted to have a miscarriage. As Peter cries during the confrontation, both of them ignite. Suddenly, Annie awakens and realizes that she's just had a nightmare within a nightmare. While Steve and Peter sleep, Annie recites Joan's spell with Charlie's sketchbook. Annie then enthusiastically wakes her husband and son for another seance, claiming that she contacted Charlie. While Steve refuses to join, Peter participates after seeing how Annie desperately wants it. Steve then agrees, so Annie finally calls for Charlie and a little while later, Peter feels the air get cold and the glass moves in front of them. When Annie calls for Charlie again and she doesn't respond, Annie becomes desperate and appears to be crazy. On the other hand, Peter sobs as he feels scared. When Annie tries to explain what's going on, a glass falls behind and the candle ignites brighter. Suddenly, Charlie seems to possess Annie. Peter then shouts in horror, so Steve breaks Annie's trance by dousing her with water before confronting his terrified son. During class, Peter notices the same weird light that Charlie saw in her bedroom. He then gets scared when he finds his reflection smirking back at him, causing him to walk out of the classroom. At the same time, Steve phones Annie, informing her that Peter has called him from school and believes an evil spirit is stalking him. He also tells her to stop acting strange as he still has a son to protect before hanging up. Then, Annie receives another call from the art gallery. Feeling pressured, Annie accidentally breaks the miniature chair, causing her to destroy everything in her studio. One night, Annie sees Charlie's pen strangely drawing in her old sketchbook. Meanwhile, Peter sees his dead sister in his room and her head comes off before turning into a ball on the floor. However, he's convinced that something weird is happening as their dog walks in and barks in his room. Suddenly, someone grabs his head from behind and Peter can only thrash in his bed as he screams in fear. When Annie comes in, Peter accuses her of sleepwalking and trying to kill him again, but Annie denies doing anything and advises Peter not to inform Steve about what happened, saying something strange is going on in the house and that she is the only one that can stop it. It turns out that the weird sketches that Annie saw earlier are about Peter as if it's depicting his death. 
Annie then throws Charlie's sketchbook into the fireplace after realizing the spirit that she summoned is wicked. Unfortunately, as the sketchbook burns, Annie's arm catches fire too, mirroring the burning of the book. With no choice left, Annie saves the book from the fire. The next day, Annie returns to Joan for assistance, but Joan is not around. Unbeknownst to Annie, Joan's apartment is filled with witchcraft paraphernalia, including a photo of Peter inside a ceremonial triangle with Charlie's crafts beside it. Then, Annie notices a familiar symbol on Joan's rug, so she runs home and inspects her mother's things. On the other hand, Joan shouts, I expel you at Peter from behind a fence at school. Confused, Peter looks around and wonders if he's the one being yelled at. Back at home, Annie discovers a book instructing how the demon Paimon could possess the most vulnerable host and how the symbol that she saw is associated with him. She also finds strange images of Joan with Ellen, showing that both women were members of a coven dedicated to earning wealth by summoning Paimon and putting him inside a male body. Feeling overwhelmed, Annie decides to hide Ellen's stuff in the attic, but instead, she finds Ellen's headless body with a Paimon symbol nearby. At the same time, Peter hears Charlie's clicking noise during class. Suddenly, Peter raises his hand as if he's having a seizure, and without warning, he slams his head on his desk. After the second slam, Peter comes back to his senses and screams in panic and pain. Just like him, his classmates are confused and terrified of what happened. On the other hand, Steve thinks of sending Annie to a recovery center. He then receives an email regarding the desecration of Ellen's grave before getting a call from Peter's school, informing him about what happened to his son. Steve then brings Peter home and almost gets into a car accident, making him cry because of what's happening to his family. As Peter sleeps, Annie informs Steve that Ellen's body is in their attic but it's been beheaded. Steve then checks the attic and quickly realizes his wife is telling the truth, wondering at the same time why she hasn't called the cops. Annie insists that the police won't help them, and the more that she talks about her mother and Joan and the group that worship Paimon, the more Steve believes that she's lost her mind. Annie also shows Steve images of Joan and Ellen wearing the Paimon seal and tells him that their family was cursed when she attempted to contact Charlie. As Annie talks hysterically, Steve looks at her with pity. Finally, when Annie reveals the significance of Charlie's sketchbook and how Steve must destroy it to save their son, Steve tells her that she needs to go to the recovery center. Steve then refuses to burn the notebook, causing Annie to throw it into the fire, despite believing it would burn her. Instead, Steve bursts into flames while Annie watches him in horror. Suddenly, she appears to be possessed again. A little while later, Peter wakes up unaware that his demonic mother hovers behind him. He also doesn't notice when she quietly crawls on the wall out of his room, and when he looks for Steve, Peter finds his father's burnt body instead. As Peter mourns, he hears noises behind him and sees an unknown naked man smiling at him. The possessed Annie then pursues Peter into the attic, and although he manages to lock himself there, Annie continues to scare him as she pounds her head on the door. In the attic, Peter discovers flies, candles, and a photo of himself on the floor. However, Ellen's body has vanished. He then slaps himself, hoping to wake up from a nightmare, but he hears a strange noise. When he looks up, he sees Annie levitating while she tries to decapitate herself with a wire. As Peter watches his mother, he sees three more naked strangers smile at him. Horrified, Peter jumps out from the window and lands in the garden where he passes out. Then, a strange glowing light goes inside Peter's body and helps him regain consciousness. Peter then follows his mother's headless body as it floats inside the treehouse, and as he walks, the naked strangers watch him. In the treehouse, Peter is greeted by a group of Paimon's worshippers. He also sees Charlie's decapitated head resting atop Paimon's statue. Dazed, Peter glances around and sees Annie and Ellen's headless bodies kneeling on the floor in front of the statue. A little while later, Joan calls Peter Charlie and tells him that they've corrected her female form before crowning him as Paimon, one of the eight kings of hell. As Joan honors Paimon, the followers kneel in front and worship their new ruler. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.